Okay, just a second. Attention, please. Zita! I like this word. Um, sorry, we don't have time to practice now. If we would have at least two, uh, two, uh, one and a half hours, then we would do a little bit more. But the idea, I just give you an idea and you try to concentrate on that. Um, I, see, I see still a lot of bent legs, a lot of bent legs, and another problem, another problem is the transfer in body weight. When you have, for example, you walk, you're walking, what does it mean for you to walk? What does it mean to walk? Why? Do we need that? Why do we need transfer body weight? Who cares? Just step and go. <laughs> Guys, we walk is to get somewhere, is to travel, to move. So of course, to, to walk, the first thing what you have to do is to transfer the body weight. So all the, leg, uh, all the actions will come after that. But the main thing is to transfer body weight. Transfer and continue directing body weight. What I see, I see steps. So after when you get on a standing leg, I see the next action what happened in your body is two flexible hip action. So you completely drop your body weight somewhere there behind you. And the next thing is the leg trying to reach forward. Not gonna happen. How can we travel? We use standing leg to do what? Not creating hip action. That action have to help us to move. It's a part of the movement. It's not Look at my. Oba! I'm so. F <laughs> the main thing to use standing leg is to direct our spine, our body. And of course, action, uh, have, we have to create an Cuban action, pendulum, everything. But it's go it has to happen under traveling body weight. It's not happen, you stop. I do the action. I keep moving and the action is coming. So all the pendulum have to be coordinated with the transfer weight and movement of the spine. Spine, pendulum, change of the side, body continue. For example, if we speak about the lock step, is lock step is a traveling uh huh? No. So cha cha one, a lock step with dancing. Cha -cha. <laughs> Is that? Huh? You still have to move, you still have to shift weight. So the action is you move the body, and action will happen. You create that action, but the main thing is to move. After you collect, you don't do just an action. You direct your body. You direct your body. You direct your body weight. But most of the time, uh, uh, dancers, what I see, is just doing the foot rhythm, and there is no body in it. It's just cha-cha one. How about? I can do that. I'm so flexible. I understand if you don't have a space, if there is a couple in front of you, and suddenly you need to keep the tick in the body, yeah? but then you need to move if you have a space, because it's a traveling chassis, you have to move. Walks, chassis, you have to coordinate your body movement, transfer body weight, pendulum action, change of the side, leg action you still have to move. 
and the main reason for walking is to travel, you take away and you start to do just bum action. Doesn't, don't you think it should happen? You should travel? You should move? Of course. You have to walk. You have to walk and not just step your feet on the floor on a spot. Now, about the leg action, again, I will come back. Why is leg action is uh, uh, weak leg actions, too much bent legs? Why, why do you think? Why do you think? Guys, everything comes to the standing leg, how you work through your standing leg. Do you understand what I'm saying or are you lost? Hello? What is standing leg? Is the one we are on, yes? It's very important how you use that leg, how you use your hip joint. This is the biggest problematic place. It's a hip joint and the lower back. If you release, if you're too flexible in your hip and your lower back, you're done. What can you do in this position? Your wheels have to be full. And not... So it's very important that you first, you create a good energy in it and you don't switch off. You don't break and you don't release. You own it. Even if you have to become, you lower your body weight, and you use the hip action, it doesn't mean you go to the point when you losing the balance. So you constantly, if you compress even a little bit, if you release your weight, there is inside part of your thighs and your ankle. Can I do another lecture? I like it. <laughs> Kidding. So, uh, uh, it's finished. Thank you. See you tomorrow. <laughs> so, guys, inside part of your thigh and your ankle is very important part. If you release your body weight and you release, you create an action in your sides, it doesn't mean you completely relax the leg. So your ankle, you still have to feel inside part of your, your foot inside part of your thigh and that uh, control even if you release weight you are still in control you still stable because from that position from that situation you can create anything you can elevate yourself again you can become soft and flexible you can create any type of movement if you would like to you can create good twist, powerful twist, you can create powerful direction for the body for your next uh, uh, movement of the body, for the next direction. So the standing leg is extremely important and you have to pay attention. And if you are going down and you release weight so low, there is simply not enough space to straighten your leg, you are too low. So you need to still have some height in your standing leg, standing thigh, uh, side, so you can easily place the straightening of the leg under, under your body. Very simple. So you don't need to go so low to get up again, drop again and again get up. So you constantly feel like you go from leg to leg, you have a still continuous height and you can transfer body weight and not completely relax. The hip action doesn't have to uh, create difficulty for the transfer weight. It's actually have to help. Your hip action, your side, is like a um, resource machine. Suspension in a car. Suspension in a car. Observe the impact. Observe the body weight to use relation, relate our body weight with the floor. And not completely compressed twist, break your hip, and collapse. I mean, this is wrong action. 
How can you move in such a speed if you're going to comp always compress and, co and uh, be broken? How can you move? Your wheels, your hip, have to be in constant toning. And if, even if you release the body weight there, there's still substance to work from it. And they transfer body weight easily. And not struggle with the transfer body weight. The tr uh, body weight, travel, transfer body weight, is the main thing you have to remember. And this is the least what you are working on. You're only working on actions. How to create a stretch in a rib cage, how to create bigger hip action. And you don't move. Are you with me? So I pay attention to my standing leg and my, uh, and my uh, actions and strength and the tone and build the energy in it. And I still, even I don't compete, I still work on it. I find this is extremely important. And like I said in the beginning, if you understand what kind of uh, movement and action is going to be the next one, if I need to direct my body to travel and to move, direct my spine and my body weight, or I need to twist to create hip twist chasse, yes? Or I need to create a back walk, which is completely different from the forward walk. Why? Because we never go with our body weight and with spine back. We have to create an opposition while we're collecting our leg to prepare for the next movement. And we go with the leg and then Depends on the timing, of course. Are you with me? So all of that, it's happened on your standing leg. All of that uh, standing leg, it creates. And actually what I said about being beautiful, being powerful, to be fast, to be uh, able to be a very dynamic dan dan dancer, to create any type of movement, direct one, flexible one, to create some beautiful, uh, uh, flexibility in your body to, uh, to create some extra th things on top to decorate my movement anything like that and to still be beautiful in my, your neck in your shoulder line so wherever you create action there you still beautiful and you can and you look like you can do it and not like I'm trying, sorry, I cannot still do, but I'm really trying and there hip action and your left cheek and the right cheek goes up all the time and eyebrow. And there is like arm lifting and shoulders go even higher. All of all these problems come because you don't create energy from the right place into, uh, uh, you don't use the build up energy from the floor through the feet, through the legs to your center and coordinate with the rest part of the body. And you don't born with it, you train that. You train that. And all the qualities, all the techniques and partnering, everything. Do you think there is something you can throw it away? I have feeling by the way nowadays what I see, the way dancers are practicing, I have feeling that there is so many things you're throwing away. Like you think the partnering is not important, the creating uh, beautiful actions in your body, leg actions, body actions for the right reason. There is a lot of things I have feeling you, you think it's not important. Why? Because you don't practice. You don't practice that. You really have, you really, the one who is going to collect in your basket the most, the most of the aspect of the dancing, of leg action, body action, partnering, uh, musicality, rhythmicality. More you have in your pockets, that couple gonna succeed. You understand? So you have to think that there is everything, there is not even one thing which is not important. And I find the top professionals or amateurs couple, that they are not only because they're so talented. No. It's because they pay attention to more things than you do and they really practice. Maybe not enough for themselves, but more than you.
Because if you would do, you would be there. So you really have to uh, schedule your practice and uh, make a plan. And all the subject, you work on everything. Not just one thing. Domo arigato. Thank you very much, guys.